Hello students, this is Professor Ryan Paul, and in this lecture I'm going to introduce you to the Shakespeare Concordance, which is a very useful tool for researching and writing about Shakespeare, and also is what you'll use for this week's writing assignment. So first, very basically, what is a concordance? Well, it's simply an index of all the words that are used in a particular text or by a particular author, and that has references to the passage in which they occur. So you can pick out a specific word, find every usage of it in a particular text, like the Bible or the works of Shakespeare, and see where it occurs so you know exactly where to look for it. The Shakespeare Concordance, as the name indicates, is an index of all of the words in all of Shakespeare's works, and it allows you to find all uses of a particular word throughout that whole body of texts. So if you want to find the word moon, and you want to see how many times Shakespeare uses it and which plays you use it in, you can look through the concordance and it'll tell you he uses moon such and such number of times in these plays, at these acts and scenes, at these lines. The concordance that we'll be using is a free concordance that's pr produced by opensourceshakespeare.org. And here's the website, opensourceshakespeare.org slash concordance. Very simple. Now this is the basic search form that you'll see when you go to the Concordance website. You can enter the word form right here, and it gives you three choices. If you want the exact spelling of the word, so just that word, or if it might be part of another word, if it might be part of a longer word, you can select the first part of a word form. So example, play could also be plays, playing, played, um, or any part of a word form. So for example, the word set, could also be setting, but it could also you could also find upset. Right, so this allows you to control how you search for the word. You'll also notice if you want to just browse around, you can go to any of the letters of the alphabet, and it'll tell you these are the number of words that Shakespeare uses that start with this letter. So there's 1,190 different word forms that start with the letter H. There's 2,625 different word forms that start with the letter C. So this is the basic search form. So let's see how it works. Let's say we wanted to find the word honest. So we just look for just the exact spelling of the word honest. Hit search. It starts to think and it tells us there are 293 different uses of the word honest. So we click on this. And now it takes us to the list of plays and each play and the number of times the word honest is used. Nine times in All's Well That Ends Well, ten times in Antony and Cleopatra, etc., etc., etc. And if we were to click on any of these, let's click on Much Ado About Nothing, it gives you all the different passages where it is spoken. It tells you the play, the scene, act one, scene one, the character that speaks it, Benedict, and the line where it begins, line 149. Do you question me as an honest man should do for my simple true judgment, or would you have me speak after my custom as being a professed tyrant to their sex? And so on and so forth. So it gives you all the different usages of the word honest. Now let's say we wanted to widen our search a little bit and look for honest in other forms, uh, under other words that might contain the word honest in it. So we click any part of a word form and we search. And so now we have a much wider range, dishonest, dishonestly, dishonesty, honest, honest hearted, honest natured, and so forth. So we see there are a number of different variations, different word forms that have the word honest in them. So we might click honesty and that tells us, okay, now here's all the plays in which the word honesty is used. And we see it's used in Much Ado About Nothing as well, three times. So that gives us another set of words that we can look for, another set of references to explore how Shakespeare uses this particular word. Now, this can get a bit tedious because it might give us way too much information since we get all the different verb forms all the different word forms from all the plays, all of Shakespeare's works. But let's say we want to narrow our search so we're just looking at one play 
rather than having to slog through and dig through all the plays to find the different words and word variations that we're looking for. So we go to advanced search right up here. And this takes us to this window. And as you can see, it gives us a lot of options, a lot more power. We can still look for all or part of the keyword. We can look for just the exact keyword. Um, we don't need to worry about the phonetic or regular expression. We can look for multiple words. Again, not something that we need to worry about here. Uh, but what's most important is this menu right here, works. We can select the specific play we want to look for. So we're looking at much to do about nothing. You can also do characters, genres, and some of these other things, but we don't need to worry about that. Just look at the works, select the work that you want, and type the word in, honest, and scroll down to search. So this will give us honest in all of the, all of the different variations of honest in much ado about nothing, just that play. So you see we have honest, honestly, honesty, dishonesty, etc., etc. We even have honester, as in to be more honest. So that allows us to refine our search, have a little bit more power, so we can look for all the variations on a particular word, all its different word forms, but narrow it to one play. So this allows us to trace a particular concept and how Shakespeare uses it and modifies it throughout a specific work. So the concordance is the tool that you're going to use if you're working on this week's writing assignment. To go over the assignment again, what you want to do is select an important word from Much Ado About Nothing. And my advice is that you choose a word that's used frequently and that has multiple variations, different word forms like honesty, dishonesty, etc. And choose a word that seems to be complex, one that has multiple meanings and uses, perhaps one that's used by multiple characters, perhaps to mean different things, and one that's used in different contexts. This will be much more fruitful than a simple word that, that seems more obvious or basic. So words that have some complexity to them will enable you to do better in this writing assignment. <clears throat> Once you've chosen your word and searched for it, you should examine the various scenes and passages in which the word is used. Look at the different entries in the concordance and select three of those passages and choose three in which the word seems to mean something different. And this might be subtle, so it might be a bit of a challenge, but try to pick passages where the word seems to be different, seems to be used differently by the characters. And then for the assignment, you want to write up an analysis of each passage. What does the keyword mean in that particular context? What about the scene modifies how the word is used? What about the scene changes the significance, the meaning of that word? How is it used differently from the other scenes that you've chosen? And finally, what does this contribute to the overall meaning of the play? And ultimately, there are a number of goals here to recognize just how complex language can be, and not just in Shakespeare, but in everyday usage. And to understand specifically how Shakespeare can harness the fluidity of language, the fact that words can mean different things in different contexts in order to create complex meanings and plots, things that develop over time and create unexpected ideas that you wouldn't notice if you're just paying attention to the superficial level of the language. And of course, it's to refine your ability to recognize these subtle nuances in language and language use, to be able to see how these things change. And finally, to express in writing how these complex expressions of meaning work, to express in writing how Shakespeare generates different ideas by twisting, playing with, modifying the use of language. So these are the major goals in the assignment for this week. So if you have any questions, you can post the question to the Ask Professor Paul discussion board. You can email me or you can call or text me. And good luck on this week's work.